Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you are watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope you'll consider subscribing. The premise of today's episode on the Honda Transalp 750 is really very simple. We're going to take the bike on a long touring style uh, road ride and talk about the comfort of the bike, what makes it comfortable, and if there are any downsides to this bike as a touring platform. So I have a route planned out of about 300 and just under 350 miles, so about 550, 600 kilometers. I feel like that's a pretty good average uh, day ride for most people who are touring on a motorcycle. I can already hear some of you typing in the comments, you know, I ride a thousand miles before breakfast every day. Sure, that's fine, but for most people, you know, 350, 400 miles or 600 kilometers is a pretty long day on a motorcycle. So I think that's a realistic test. Let's take a walk around of the bike in its current state. So I've been doing the series on the bike and doing all sorts of, you know, uh, changes to it. <coughs> so right now I'm running the Tusk 2-Track Adventure Tires. I've got the Yoshimura Exhaust. I've got the Tractive Suspension. Uh, the Yoshimura Tail Tidy. I'm running a Rig Gear. Uh, this is the large tail bag, just really nice for day rides. I've got the Drive Mode Dashboard Navigation System. Quad Lock Phone Mount. I've got a little Throttle Rocker, which uh, I love. Outback Motor Tech Protection, Alt Rider, Foot Pegs. All this stuff will be linked below. So if you want to purchase anything for your own bike, please use my links. It helps support the channel. I really appreciate it. These are some highway pegs I got from Amazon. Really be useful today. These are the 3D Cycle Parts Mojave uh, Auxiliary Lights. Absolutely love those things. Tusk 2-Track Front Tire. Yoshimura Turn Signals. This is a Pui's Windshield Visor. I'll link that below as well. Really helps clean up the airflow. Uh, Insta360 cam, Barkbuster handguards, and, you know, I guess that's the main stuff, really. Uh, I've got a little protector on the screen because it kept getting scratched. So the only things that really change the comfort of the bike, I've got the stock seat, too. Uh, this visor really cleans up the airflow, so I highly recommend that, and I use it on this bike 100% of the time. The highway pegs, of course, allow you to stretch out, but other than that, I mean, the suspension actually makes the bike more firm, so I think that's probably hurting the comfort, honestly, more than helping it in terms of road riding. Uh, yeah, so that's about it, so uh, let's get on and uh, go for a ride. All right, let's quickly talk about the gear I'm wearing for today's ride. I'm wearing the I, uh, Rai Contour X helmet. I am uh, using a, a DJI Osmo 4 action camera, using my Cardo communicator. I've got some Climb Badlands uh, winter gloves. I've also got some lighter weight gloves in case it gets too warm in a desert later. I'm wearing the newly redesigned MSR Explorer uh, adventure suit. They, they fixed everything that, was, that I didn't like about it, so it's brand new for a 2024. I'll have a dedicated review on this uh, shortly if I don't already have it, uh, but really awesome now. They fixed everything I didn't like. Uh, for my boots, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So let's go for a ride. All right, so fueling up the Transalp is a good time to talk about the fuel range that I normally get. So the tank is about, what is it, 4.6 gallons, 4.8 gallons? I'll put that below. I don't know, I can't remember at the moment, but it gets around 45 to 50 miles a gallon, uh, which is... You know, sometimes they get over 50 miles a gallon. So my real-world fuel range uh, usually is around 200 miles, thereabouts. Um, the fuel gauge is really pessimistic. So it'll kind of tell you, like, you're running low on gas and you still have, like, a gallon and a half or two gallons of gas. So it's kind of it's kind of one of those things where they're being really conservative. But, yeah, 200 miles, so it's a pretty respectable fuel range, uh, to be honest. And uh, 87 gas, really like that, too. So we'll use uh, the instruments on the Transalp are pretty good uh, with all the displays you get. So uh, we'll use trip B to track this trip uh, and we'll use trip A to track the fuel for each fuel tank of gas that we go through. So to reset trip A, I just hold function until that lights up and then I hold the up button. So that's reset and I hold that down again. And then we're here, so trip A, we'll calculate. We'll see the fuel we consume on this whole ride today and our fuel cons uh, uh, consumption economy. And then trip A will be for each gas tank.
stands up is a surprisingly fun bike to ride. Sounds great. The engine's really sporty and loves to rev out. Just a great motorcycle. So the idea for today's ride is that we're going to try to stay on the bike as much as possible not and minimize our brakes to see like okay you know how far how comfortable is this thing really in terms of the seating comfort and the ergonomics the engine vibration we're going to be on the freeway uh, for like a long part of the ride which kind of sucks for me but it's a good test uh, not only for these tires which I'm also testing but uh, you know 80, 80 to 85 miles an hour with big rigs around you and stuff that's a good real world test for touring because sometimes you just have to do that uh, even though you'd rather be on a back road I know we'll be on kind of two lane highways uh, or maybe uh, other smaller highways for the second half of the ride and I definitely hope to be back around like four o'clock it should be about a six hour ride I would think so so I've been on the freeway for quite a while now I'm on the stretch of the Interstate 10 uh, between the Coachella Valley and Arizona. So we are going all the way to Arizona on this ride, all the way out to Blythe, before we turn around and start heading west, back west on Highway 78. So uh, here's what I'll tell you about the Trans Alps so far. For a mid-sized adventure bike, this is as good as it gets for touring. Uh, the reasons for that, the wind protection is really excellent. The seat is very comfortable and the engine is very smooth and has no vibration. I feel zero vibration at 80 miles an hour. I'm at 5,000 RPM, so the bike has pretty nice tall gearing, which helps it be a good touring bike. So, you know, sitting here on the freeway at this speed, I am uh, extremely, extremely happy with the performance of this bike. And I don't recall riding any other any other mid-sized adventure bike, I hate people like this. I don't recall any other mid-sized adventure bike that performs this well, really, at this high-speed cruising kind of stuff. Of course, I've got my highway peg so I can, you know, rest my legs out like that if I want, which I need to remember to use those. Um, yeah, there's some wind, but, I mean, you could get different windshields if you want uh, to get better wind protection. That wouldn't be too hard. But look how stable this thing is. It's just, this is a phenomenal touring motorcycle. And when you think about the price, under $10,000, you get this thing and you could tour with it and do off-roading and do everything else. What an incredible bargain. In fact, this bike is so smooth that I have to kind of watch myself because I'll go 85 or 90 uh, if I'm not paying attention. And the speed limit here is 70, so most traffic goes about 80. That seems to be about the upper limit for not getting it pulled over. Uh, so I'm trying not to go 90, but the bike is comfortable doing that if I want to. So I have a lot more ground to cover, so we'll check back in later. Give you a little uh, glimpse into the life of uh, traffic on a two-lane freeway in California. So this is what happens. It's like traffic wants to go about 85 to 90 miles an hour on its own through here but with the semis I don't know why they do this but they'll get next to each other like this like maybe he's trying to pass but then they just end up going the same speed and blocking traffic there's a huge line of traffic behind me for like a mile because these people uh, these folks won't get just I don't know like why is this happening if you're a trucker watching this video I have nothing against trucking I, I know you guys are super hard working and it's very important and most of you are excellent drivers, but why is this happening? Like, why, what's the story here? I just don't get it. Okay, here's a sit rep update. Uh, I am 135 miles into the ride. I finished the long freeway drone uh, out to Blythe, so I'm now in Blythe, which Arizona is just right there across the Colorado River. But I've turned on the Highway 78, so we're gonna take Highway 78 and loop back around the south side of the Salton Sea and back towards the area where I live. So we're almost, uh, we're not quite halfway through the ride. Uh, and I don't have any discomfort. Like I feel just fine. I mean, I have to pee. I'm hungry. I want to have something to eat and I have to pee. But besides that, like my butt's not hurting. My hands aren't sore. Like uh, it's really, this is a great, a great motorcycle that if you have to just drone on the highway, this is a pretty darn good bike to do that uh, with. 
so I have no issue so far now would I like to have cruise control yeah for sure that would be really nice but we don't have that on this bike unfortunately <laughs> what a phenomenal engine. stretch I've got about oh 60 70 miles left I'm super comfortable man I'm, I'm telling you like no joke like I really have almost zero discomfort um, ridden for almost 300 miles I'm about 290 300 miles right now so I'm in the Anza Borrego uh, Desert State Park and I uh, just headed on the home stretch we got a big storm coming in tonight so you can see kind of these wavy clouds uh, it's kind of the first indication of that um, but yeah, I mean the bike is not only fun to ride, but super, super comfortable. This is one of the best seats of any motorcycle that I've ever tested or owned. All right, while I'm back home, uh, let me show you the uh, odometer or trip meter just to make, just so you know I'm not making this up. Um, not that this is anything extreme, this isn't a whole lot of miles, but I think it's representative of what a lot of riders will do when they're touring on their bike, about 350 miles. Uh, what is that in kilometers, like 550, 570, somewhere in there? So you can see here, uh, trip B, 347 miles. We use 7.1 gallons of gas. We got 49 miles a gallon average. So I don't know. I'm pretty impressed with that fuel mileage there. So yeah, there we go. So, you know, we've talked about all this kind of at this point already. The only things you could do, I think, to make this bike even more comfortable for touring for long distance would be I'd like to have a little bit more wind coverage to the sides. I still get quite a bit of noise on the helmet, although it's not bad for a stock windshield. Um, cruise control would be amazing although let me let you in on a little secret I have the cruise control system right here see Viridian cruise so we are putting cruise control on the Transalp in the next episode as well as showing the tubeless wheel conversion so stay tuned for that episode so yeah the only things I think you could do to improve it really I mean the seat I would not change the seat I would ride across country on this seat it's one of the best I've, I've experienced a little more wind protection and adding that cruise control the highway pigs are nice these are kind of already I don't know they're kind of janky but I mean hey they work and I can fold them in like this when I'm when I don't need to use them anymore so yeah all right, let's do some scoring and some comparisons with the Transalp. So I used to have kind of a chart up in the garage on the whiteboard, but it was getting a little messy and I'm trying to professionalize this a little bit better. And also I'm charting out and scoring and ranking all the adventure bikes uh, that I've ever tested. So you can see this, this is a sneak preview of that. So you can see like the specs of the bike, the pricing, what weight category it falls into, uh, so the Transalp's in the middleweight category between 204 to 230 kilograms or about uh, 450 to 510 pounds. So it falls into that weight class. So, and then in terms of the scoring right now, I'm just doing a simple scoring uh, out of 40. So there's four uh, categories, off-road, on-road, comfort, and then fun score. So a, t a possible of 40 points maximum. 
uh, one out of 10 to each category. So this is what I'm going with right now, but we're gonna probably tweak this later. I'm not sure, it's a work in progress. So how does the Transalp 750, we're gonna cover all of this other kind of comparisons in a separate episode later. But for now, just talking about the on-road score and the comfort score, um, and how that factors in compared to its competitors. So the Transalp's competitors are really these bikes here in the midweight category around $10,000. So you've got the V-Strom 650 XT, the V-Strom 800 DE, you've got, uh, if you wanted to go lower, you could look at like an Xcape 650 from Moto Marini. You've got the CF Motos in there. You've got the Tenere 700, of course. Um, you start getting the more expensive bikes like 890s and Desert Axis. It's not really fair because it, they cost so much more, but they are technically all middleweight adventure bikes. So on the on-road score for the Transalp, uh, I will give it a seven. So it's one out of 10, right? So the best bikes in the category, the Desert X is, gets a nine out of 10. It's the best middleweight adventure bike for on-road performance. Not talking about comfort, just on-road performance. The Desert X takes the crown there uh, with the Tiger 900 being a close second. Um, for the 2023 model. So, and then in terms of comfort, the comfort is where the Transalp really excels. So I'm giving it an eight out of 10. It's uh, every bit as comfortable as a Tiger 900, uh, 800 uh, DE V-Strom, a 650 V-Strom, and it's a one, one, one point higher than like a Touareg or an 890 Adventure or a KLR or a Norden or an Af even the Africa Twin. So why is it more comfortable than an Africa Twin? It, honestly, it is. The seat's better, the wind protection is better, the engine has less vibration. So I'm really uh, being honest about these scores here. So the bikes that do less well maybe with the Comfort, you know, the 850GS, the Ibex, the Desert X is not comfortable really, the seat's not good, the windshield's not good, uh, Tenere is not very comfortable either. The seat's like a board. The, the windshield has a lot of buffeting. The engine is really revved out kind of on the highway, which is uh, very different than what the Transalp, you know, is doing. So there's my scores there. So it gets an overall score of 27, which is very, very high, uh, you know, in terms of an overall score. So that's how this, this breaks down. So I guess if you're looking at these midweight bikes and you want the most comfortable bike, the Transalp is definitely should be at the top of your list. You just have to keep in mind all the other factors that are involved. All right, well, I hope this episode on the Transalp was useful and informative and educational and all that good stuff. Uh, please consider supporting Big Rock Moto independent journalism that I'm doing here. If you wanna do that, there's ways to do that in the pinned comment and the description below. Stay tuned because in the next episode for the Transalp, which I don't even know what number that is, but we're doing the tubeless wheel conversion and electronic cruise control, which is gonna put this bike over the top and it's gonna be the midweight Japanese unicorn adventure bike that everybody says that they want. At least that's what I think. I think it'll be the unicorn, but eh, you know, uh, we'll have to wait and see. All right, thanks you so much for watching. Ride safe and I'll see you out there.